and welcome to another edition of Sci-Fi Journal. This is Sci-Fi Journal for February 2012. And with us today, our co-hosts are Calvin Watts III, Jay Kingston, Salam, Mark Morso, and I'm James Hinzey. And uh, we're going to start the show off with uh, uh, viewers, one of the viewers' favorite segments, Game Over. Well, I'm not really used to going first. It's, it's just, it's weird, but that's okay. So, 2012, it's February. We're yep. still alive. Mm -hmm. Still going. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm wearing my Tom Brady jersey because as we tape, the Patriots are in the AFC Championship game. Mm -hmm. They're going to be playing tomorrow against the Ravens and hopefully going to their fifth Super Bowl so by the time in they, 10 years. By the time people see this, they'll either be really happy or really sad. Yeah. Yes. You're going to remind them and they're going to go, oh, no. <laughs> or they're going to go, yeah. Well, I, I bring Super that up, Bowl. though, because if, if you think about it, you know, just talking about championship games, they've been in seven championship games now in the past right. 10 years. We're not going to see this again, mm. probably for mm. some time, if ever. So enjoy it while we have it. Right. But I digress. Um, not only is it 2012, it also happens to be Paramount's 100th anniversary. Pretty cool. Mm. So of course they are celebrating and going all out. You know, you'll see a lot of marquee uh, titles come out in the movie theaters. The Avengers are going to be really big for them. And they're also releasing some of their biggest titles on Blu-ray for the first time this year. Hmm. They plan on doing once a month and probably having catalog titles in between. So um, we're looking forward to the rumors that both Titanic, which is going to be out in 3D in the theaters, I, I think in like March or April, and um, the Indiana Jones films will be coming out later this year, it looks like. So probably towards the fall, you know, push everything for The Christmas. Indiana Jones films have never been released on, they've been on DVD. Yeah, but not on Blu-ray. Oh, not, not on, on Blu-ray, Blu no. Right. Okay. And as far as Titanic goes, uh, I'll tell you, you say what you want about James Cameron, you know, about his personality or whatever, but that guy knows how to make a movie that people want to see. Okay. Yep. I love that movie. No doubt you know? about it. I absolutely that was, love that was That was a movie. fabulous movie. I didn't care for, um, um, Avatar, as much as some people did, there was there was some really good stuff in Avatar. Right. You know, like the fight scenes were incredible, but you know, some of the it, to me it was a little too predictable in some spots. But don't listen to me. For what was it, two billion dollars or something he mm. made with that worldwide? Well, when it, when all is said and done, he's going to go down as one of the most celebrated filmmakers of all oh, time. Oh, absolutely. And, and no his question. body of work will stand up against almost anybody's. Absolutely. Let's see. Uh, other movie news or, or, you know, that sort of stuff. James Bond, Skyfall is the 23rd official mm -hmm. James Bond film oh. <clears throat> in production now and it'll be coming out in the fall. I bring this up because of, they just had the, the annual CES Electronics uh, Expo right. out in Las Vegas where you get to showcase all of the upcoming um, entertainment stuff, you know, all the latest gadgets. Right now they're, they're showing the latest and like high definition stuff. And so we're at 1080p and they're showcasing 8K stuff, which mm. is basically looking out your window and that's what you look like <laughs> on the TV. But right. We'll, we'll talk about that in the future because that's still a little ways off. You know, a display, you're talking like hundreds of thousands of dollars. Mm. I digress again. But MGM has announced, now that they're back on track, that um, the Bond, it's 50 years of Bond. So, since 62 was when Dr. No came out. Right. And they're going to celebrate in a big way by having all of the James Bond titles released on Blu-ray in, in one huge box set. Amazon right. has it on pre-order right now, which will break it down to like 10 films per set. And everything is there except for the David Niven Casino Royale and then the Never Say Never Again, which wasn't part of the, mm. the whole thing. Um, only nine films up to this point have been released on Blu-ray, including the Daniel Craig ones so far. So the, having everything else come out and there's going to be all the new supplements, the whole nine yards. So anybody who's a James Bond fan and borderline fantasy, which I am, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Mm. It's going to be pretty cool. Uh, let's see, moving on. Uh, Digital Bits did a review of the Star Trek Next Generation sampler disc, right. which is now available in stores. And they were pleasantly surprised as to how everything turned out, even though some of the hairstyles are dated. Mm -hmm. um, by, by 
and you know wearing the mini skirts and all that stuff but you know having oh, oh, oh. wearing mini skirts is never dated that's right right because Jay wears one all the time he's always <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I only shave my legs for you Mark. oh I know <laughs> having ILM do the, the series originally on film uh, and being able to upgrade the visual effects have really made a difference and mm. it really makes this sample of disc look really shine and Good. Paramount has high hopes for the, the series when it gets released in Blu-ray later on this year so I'm looking forward to that, it looks pretty cool. Let's see what else do we have. Speaking of Star Trek and moving on to video games, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of torn about this because this sounds silly but I, I would really like to get the chance to play this. You ever hear of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? I'm sure you have. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. One of the arcade titles that's going to be coming out for Xbox Live Car Arcade is Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? The Star Trek version. Oh my, all right. So mm -hmm. they, they, they had basically, it it's, it's has an original series motif and you could pick one of four avatars, including like you, her, and then you, you know, ask trivia questions. Sounds really cool, right? Right. But and it's going to be available this month worldwide, everywhere, except for... Rhode Island. Canada, no. <laughs> Mexico, and the United States, basically North America, wow. we get screwed. That sucks. Why do they do it? Licensing things, I have no idea. Hopefully, yeah. I mean, this, this, I just heard about this game coming out, so mm. hopefully it's just a licensing thing and, and we'll get it too, because I can't see, I mean, most of the, the Star Trek fans are, are here in the States, you would figure. Yeah, I mean, it was made in the United States, so. Mm. You would figure. And also, it's not a full-fledged sequel, um, more like a, a side project, but uh, the next Alan Wake story, Alan Wake American Nightmare is going to be coming out. And I'm really looking forward to this. I was an absolutely huge fan of the Alan Wake um, game when it came out, and I can't stress that enough, that if you haven't played it, you should really go out there and play it. Mm. That's not the one where you shine a flashlight to destroy yes, the demons? That, okay. that's, well, you, yeah, you, you shine a flashlight to, to like stun them, them but you've got you to still shoot them with right. like whatever that you, weapons and stuff that you have, but no, I was, it was very creepy and it was definitely worth, mm. worth your time. Uh, moving on to conventions. Uh, TempleCon, as we all know, is this month, and, right. and their gaming thing is going to be, it was pretty cool, I'm yep. sure, as we'll be talking about in future episodes. Oh, I have a little bit that I put together for a couple of other cons coming up, too, so we'll, we'll put it in the show. Okay. East, which it should be really huge this year, yep. April 6th to 8th at the Boston Convention Center. Yep. Um, the three-day passes are gone. The single passes are still there, wow. but get them now before they are gone. I'm telling you, it's an absolute event. Um, they've realized just how big this convention is, is becoming, so they're going to be a lot of sh showcasing marquee titles. I'm personally hoping to get a heads-up look of Aliens, Colonel Marines. It's getting a lot of good buzz, so I'm really hoping to, to take, check that out. So Leslie and I will be going up. Definitely looking forward to seeing that. Um, and last but not least, we have a couple of trailers for you. Um, going back to the whole post-apocalypse motif, uh, Naughty Dog, which is a, uh, the developer behind a, the Drake's Uncharted series for the PlayStation 3. Yes, right. I'm talking about a PlayStation. This is a PlayStation 3 exclusive title. There you go. I can't tell you the last time I actually talked about a PlayStation 3 only title, but this just looks incredible. They, they, Naughty Dog has made some of the best games like ever. And so The Last of Us has to do with this man, the older gentleman, and this, this girl, and apparently there's some type of virus that has affected uh, the, the global world. So now nature is basically coming back to reclaim the city. Most of the people are dead. And so these, these two people are working their way across America and, and trying to survive. Trailer is very vague, but it looks absolutely incredible. And I'm definitely going to be picking this when it comes out. So take a look.
Are you okay? Better than that guy. Search him. I'm gonna take care of his buddy and then we quit this place. <sighs> ah, bingo. This is our routine. Day and night, all we do is survive. It never lets up. He tells me how these streets were crowded with people just going about their lives. <laughs> Must have been nice. And I saved the best for last. And, and you know, it really strikes me sometimes as I love playing games, but sometimes I get behind it and the stuff that I want to play. And I haven't gotten around to playing Resident Evil 5 yet. Resident Evil. But yes. I, I better get on the ball because Resident right. Evil 6 has been announced. Oh, okay. Coming out on November 20th of this year. Wow. Looks absolutely incredible. Uh, the two main characters are going to be Leon Kennedy from the second Resident Evil mm -hmm. and also Resident Evil 4. And Chris Redfield makes a return appearance. He, he's basically the main character of the series, being in the original. He was just in 5. Um, it looks like the storyline is going to be split up across the globe, but it looks awesome. I'm sure it'll play just fine. And of course, right around that time, they're going to have the next Resident Evil movie. With, That's right. I saw the clip. For yeah, it. so that looks cool. So we'll have with a trailer Mia for that. Yeah, I know yeah. how much you love her. So. <laughs> I'm sure we'll have that in a future episode, and, and Jay, Jay can just skew you some more for that. So that's all I got. Good. Sounds all right. good. All right. We're moving on to Tube News. Tube News. Here we go. Tube News. Body time. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's snowing outside. Don't You're panic. about as enthusiastic as a fart sometimes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Monster Man is a new sci fi channel series that follows the work of monster prop builder Cleve Hallen, his family, as well as some friends and office staff, as they bring the movie world's most imaginative creatures to life. It's a reality type show that premiered in February. It's kind of like, you know, they follow his exploits, yeah. and I guess they fight a lot. And it's supposed to be fun to watch. Kind of like American <laughs> Chopper, except with Mon monsters. With monsters, Movie right. Monsters. Exactly. Okay. Doctor Who started filming this month in February with new Who? episodes. Exactly. New Doctor Who. With new. Give me a sonic screwdriver. Can I get a sonic screwdriver? Thank you. <laughs> Ooh, no more blast. With new episodes returning in August. <laughs> Some speculate we'll get another split season with six episodes this year. Then a Christmas special, Actually, and then yeah. the rest in 2013. So, no more Who until August. Awake is an NBC science fiction crime series starring Jason Isaacs, who was Who in Harry Lucius Potter? Malfoy Lucius in Malfoy in Harry Potter. Didn't recognize him without the wig. The show will premiere in March of this year. The theoretical issue of quantum immortality, dying in one reality but staying alive in another, is explored in the show with one person able to cross over to the other reality by falling asleep. Sounds complicated, right? Awake was one of the eight most exciting new series at the first Critics' Choice Television Awards. The plot is a bit complicated, so we have a trailer. Check it out. Reservations 
So tell me how this works. I don't know. I close my eyes. I open them. Same as you. Let's just start at the beginning. No. Let's start it right now. I understand you've gone back to work. I've got you working with a partner. Detective Brent! New guy. Over here! Vega. Witnesses! And then what? Then I go home. Did she start redecorating the house after the accident? Right after the funeral. And then what? I wake up. I gotta go. And this has been happening since the accident? Yeah. What's the purpose of the rubber band? Just help me keep things straight. Green is Rex's favorite color, and uh, I wear a red one when I'm with Hannah. We come up with all sorts of ways to get through the loss of a loved one, but your mind, it simply created an entire reality where your wife survived in one and your son in the other, but you have different cases in each. The camera on that building, go see if it caught anything useful. Different partners in each. Kidnapping takes a girl to Waverly Park a lot by the docks. Meaning you can't tell whether you're awake or asleep at this very moment. I'm awake with my wife and I close my eyes, I open them, I'm awake with my son. Well, I can assure you, Detective Britton, this is not a dream. What? It's exactly what the other shrink said. There is a house built out of stone. Did she tell you why she wants to move? She says it's too hard to live with the empty room upstairs. And yet, you're determined to stay there. This is a place where I don't feel alone. The thing is, for me, the room upstairs isn't empty. 611, we were. Why are we here? I had a dream about it. Or I'm having a dream. Why does it matter what was parked in 611? A hunch. It's expected that these sorts of details will begin to cross over. Morning, detective. You begin working on one case, a murder here in reality, and then suddenly you begin working another case, a missing child. There, in your dream, there's no kidnapped child. There's no car in the parking lot. I don't know that that's true. If it isn't, then there's a kidnapped girl who needs my help. While your brain should be resting, you're using it to hold up a detailed alternate reality. A moment of panic. Anna? Anna? Of confusion. I don't know where you are. That's just the tip of an iceberg. I'm not sure what's going on. I can help, but not if you don't let me. Yes, I still see my wife and my son. So if you're telling me that the price of seeing them, of feeling them, of having them in my life is my sanity, that's the price I will happily pay. Trust me, when it comes to letting one of them go, I have no desire to ever make progress. And finally, the animated Blade series has started on G4. Friday oh, nights at 11. I watched a couple of those. They were pretty good. Uh, and we bid a fond farewell and thank you to NBC for five great years of Chuck. Chuck. That was an awesome show. Yeah. And they've already made plans to get the entire series in one collection on, on DVD, 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 which is hmm. pretty cool. Cool. And that's all we have for Tube News. Let's move over to the wonderful world of movies with Jay Kingston and a segment we like to call Popcorn Previews. Okay, the first movie this month is G.I. Joe Retaliation. It's really going to be bad. I don't like this movie. Starring, shut the... <laughs> okay. <sighs> starring DJ Katrona, um, Byung Hun Lee, Ray Park of Star Wars fame. All right, he's good. Um, Dwayne Johnson. Nope. And Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yes. The Joes are set up for a fall 
and are all but wiped out. Now it's time for retaliation. It's directed by John Chu. Release date is set for June 29th of this year. Let's take a look. Security's early. You with me? Today, the world's elite fighting force betrayed our nation. On my orders, the G.I. Joes were terminated with extreme prejudice. They're all dead. We were set up right from the start. We're all that's left. Let's move. The world ain't saving itself. There's no one we can trust. There is one man. You all right? Yeah. You all right? My cholesterol is a little high. Now, you're saying it's going to suck. I think just by the previews that I've seen, it looks good. Yeah, well, I hope I'm... I mean, it, it, it's... The first it, one good? It's I mean. not Citizen Kane. I, mean. I like the first one. No, it's it, not. I like the first no, one. No, it's not Citizen like Kane, but it's a good film. popcorn. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. You know? It's fun to go see and watch things blow up and, you know, all that. And it, the, where the first one had villains that were kind of bigger-than-life villains, I think this one is going to have a lot more subtlety involved in it. It's going to be a lot more realistic-type villains. Mm -hmm. All right. People working behind the scenes type of thing. We I, I think having Bruce Willis as the original G.I. Joe was we'll cool. Yeah. I, I think mean, that's that was a good awesome idea. to see well, that. Uh, it, I was watching the preview, and the part where they're showing the White House and the two Cobra flags draped down in front of the White House mm -hmm. got me... I mean, it really right. kind of got me a little upset, you know? So, anyway, Prometheus, our next film, stars Numi Rapace. I hope I'm saying your name yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Michael I think, Fassbender. I don't, I don't think she's watching, so you don't have to worry. Michael Fassbender, Guy Pierce, and Charlize Theron. Now, this movie looks awesome. Yes. yes. It's directed by Ridley Scott. And let's see, astronauts discover a derelict craft on a distant planet, and what they find could mean our doom. All right, this is a kind of prequel to the movie Alien. I say kind of because it is and it isn't directly right. a prequel to it. Yeah, I don't know if we'll, we won't see probably any alien in it. Probably not. But um, but you will see the Star Rider type aliens, I believe. Right. The guy that uh, was the, in the, the, the space, the space jockey. jockey. The space right. jockey. Yeah. Space right. jockey. And the ship is definitely there. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And this uh, premieres on June eighth of this year, and it looks intense. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at that footage. You don't have to stop. You I was wrong. It was so wrong. I'm so sorry.
Okay, next we have Snow White and the Huntsman, starring Kristen Stewart as Snow White, yep. Charlize Theron as the Evil Queen, and um, Chris um, Hemsworth, who played Thor as the Hunter, or the Huntsman. Now, this is a dark version of the Snow White tale. The Evil Queen in this is really evil. Mm. I mean... She's, she's really kind of badass, and uh, there's, there's a sense of urgency when Snow White is being chased by the Huntsman, and you kind of get the idea that the Huntsman turns out to be a heroic character in this. And we're all hoping that Kristen Stewart does a much better acting job in this one than she did in the Twilight series. Yeah, well, hey, can't be that hard. That's true. <laughs> Give her a stepladder, she can climb up to the role. Mm. Anyway... Um, it's a it's it's a mark a uh, much darker edge to the film. This one comes out on June first of this year, and it looks pretty good. No, I it mean, do, it does it, absolutely. It really does look pretty good, especially with the fighting sequences and things like that. So, let's take a look. This is pure fantasy. So let's take a look at this one. such value. That is none of your concern. And if I refuse? Lips red as blood. Hair black as night. Bring me your heart, my dear, dear Snow White. And moving right along, speaking oh, of pure fantasy. Mark's going to love this. Yep. Keep your comments to yourself, Frenchie. All right, I'll wait. The Hobbit, part one, an unexpected journey. You know what? This actually looks pretty good. I yeah. might go see this one with you guys. Well, stars Ian McKellen, reprising his role as Gandalf. Gandalf the Grey, right? Gandalf the Grey. Yes. Yep. This, because this is a prequel to the trilogy That's of right. uh, The Lord of the Rings. Yep. Um, Mark Freeman as young Bilbo. Martin. Martin, sorry. sorry. Martin Freeman. Yeah, it says it right here. I just don't have my glasses on. And Kate Blanchett. And tells the story of young Bilbo Baggins, who's hired by a group of um, dwarves to be their sneak thief. Hmm. And it's the different adventures that they run into. We'll see Shalab, the spider in this one. We'll see some um, goblins in this one. And uh, of those course, goblins or regular goblins? Real goblins. Oh. And I think they're going to end the film before he gets into the cave with smog, but I'm not oh. sure. Okay. But uh, Gollum makes another appearance. Yeah, I was going to say one. we saw. Yes. We see him in the. Yeah. We see him in the in the preview. This one comes out December sixteenth. So see it early before, before the world, the world goes boom. Yep. <laughs> and uh, let's take a look at that footage. It looks great. <laughs> My dear Frodo, you asked me once if I had told you everything there was to know about my adventures. While I can honestly say I have told you the truth, I may not have told you all of it. Bilbo Baggins. 
I'm looking for someone to share in an adventure. I can't just go running off into the blue. I am a Baggins. Wait! Of Bag End. Turbo. Allow me to introduce Fili, Kili, Oin, Loin, Darlin, Balin, Befa, Bofa, Bumper. Nori, Nori, Nori. And the leader of our company, Sorin Oakenshield. Far over the misty mountains cold to dungeons deep and caverns old the pines were roaring on the height the winds were moaning in the night the fire was red it flamed and spread the trees like torches blazed with light I cannot guarantee his safety understood nor will I be responsible for his fate A tale or two to tell when you come back. Can you promise that I will come back? No. And if you do, you will not be the same. My name is Bilbo Baggins. Baggins's. What is a Baggins's? Precious. I don't want Lord of the Rings to be the last thing I see. <laughs> Finally, Wrath of the Titans. It's a sequel to the... Uh, to Clash of the okay. Titans, right. Starring Sam Worthington, Ray Fiennes, and Liam Neeson. It's the sequel to the remake of Clash of the Titans, which came out, was it last year? Yes. Okay. That was all right. It, it was wasn't okay. fantastic. Yeah, it was okay. It was good. I enjoyed it. But they've got some really good actors in this one. Liam Neeson, Ray Fiennes, mm. Sam Worthington. So yep. it looks like it's got real potential to be good. And hopefully they didn't just say, okay, we made money off the first one. Let's jump into a second one. This one's going to be released at the end of March, March 30th. Let's take a look at that. Gods are losing our power. We believed Titans to be imprisoned forever. Now, they're breaking free. I want mean chaos. The end of the world. What am I meant to do? I need your help. This is for gods, not humans. You will learn someday that being half human makes you stronger than a god. Friends, that is all she wrote for Popcorn Previews for the month of February. 
So back in January, uh, James and Jay had the uh, good fortune to go to Aresia 2012, which we have gone to in, in previous years, which is an annual convention they hold up in Boston, which they do all sorts of, of really cool things, art, um, TV stuff, fantasy, science fiction. They have a, a masquerade ball. It's a lot of fun. And they got to do some really cool things, and you are going to get to see what they had to do in this segment. So check this out. So, how did you enjoy it? I loved it. I loved it. It was, um, I think it had one of the best feelings uh, of any uh, Eresia I've been to in a long time. It was just a, a really friendly, yeah. warm feeling yeah. to the convention itself. And for 3,300 people who yeah. attended this That's thing, a lot of warm yeah. feelings. It was been, like a mini WorldCon almost. They've been growing by 10 to 20 percent every year yeah. for the last uh, five, six years. Uh, they sort of had to shrink a little bit when they moved from Park Plaza to the Hyatt in Cambridge. Mm -hmm. uh, but then that place kept growing in terms of numbers. And uh, you know, now we're at the Westin in uh, Waterfront in Boston. Yep. Uh, it's the second year there. Uh, I think they're still working out some of the kinks in terms of their relationship with the, hosp with the hotel. Mm -hmm. And because uh, there were some problems there you know, behind the scenes, I think. But um, I wasn't privy to that. Right. You were because you were on staff. but. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've been trying to be part of the staff. I volunteer to work on the masquerade, so that way I get a little staff ribbon with my badge. And then I've been doing panels too. So I did uh, three Harry Potter panels and one on steam, mm -hmm. a science panel on how do you make and use steam. And it's not just boiling water on your stove. So you put your physics degree to work. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm talking about 1200 PSI, a th yeah. almost a thousand degree. Oh yeah. Steam. Oh yeah. Um, so as a program participant, I have another ribbon, and then other uh, people give out ribbons for like con their conventions to advertise their conventions. This is Orlando World Science Fiction Convention in 2015, and this is a uh, costume uh, hall costume award that someone gave me. But I'm a member of the Northern Lights, so it's like, okay, thanks. Uh, yeah. Northern Lights uh, is know. a costumers guild that's in this general area around New the New England area. Yeah. Um, and they're part of the International Costumers. Guild also, mm -hmm. chapter of. So, um, but you deserved that ribbon. That was a great costume. You, yeah, your space uh, spaceman costume. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I had to fix it up a little bit for Regia, mm -hmm. and uh, I wore it around. Um, so you also had some artwork in the art show. Yes, I did, and uh, we'll see that uh, later on during the toys, props, yeah. and other stuff segment. Um, I had four pieces in the art show. I did not win any award, did not sell any artwork, but I don't feel bad. I'm in good company. I mean, when when Bob Eggleton and his wife Marianne only sell three pieces between the two of them at the show, you know, it's people, it, it's hard times. People yeah. don't have the money to mm -hmm. spend. Yeah. I mean, I remember going to Regis years ago when they were at the Park Plaza and people were dropping money left and right on artwork. Um, I, oh, you're talking like 2008 to before everything dropped off. Oh no, yeah, I'm yeah. talking back even further back than that. Yeah. 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 Late right. 90s. Late yeah. 90s. Early 2000s, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, you know, it's going to fluctuate. The market will improve and mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe I'll sell something sometime, maybe not. I don't care. I don't go for that. I just go to show what I've been doing. You know, so um, it, that was part of my participation in the whole thing. Saturday evening, um, Barbara got dressed up a little formal, and, and I got dressed up a little formal and walked around with my top hat during the whole thing. Yeah. And uh, James was there walking around the art show with his Bah Humbug Christmas yeah. stocking, which was <laughs> funny as hell. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the, the art show was very well represented. There was, there was art there of every uh, type, mm -hmm. um, every talent level, every skill level. Um, they have a, uh, a wonderful program where they give out awards to um, high school students who are up-and-coming artists. And I got to say, they're scary. Oh. Some of the arts from the yeah. high school students, yeah. really good stuff. Yeah. Also, so. uh, in the masquerade, the best in show um, was a novice. Which one? The uh, Charlie's Fallen Angels. Oh, yes, yes. yes. They did such a great job with, they the, did. with the presentation and their outfits were immaculate, you know, very well tailored and everything, uh, you know, and so 
they were saying that you know these novices are scaring us because they're so good. Yeah. Uh, the, the the Dalek one was also a novice. It oh, was a that full was blown. That was my favorite out of the whole thing. Full blown black Dalek. Yep. You know all you know it was authentic looking. Mm -hmm. um, you know rode around, drove around just like a real Dalek. Uh, novice. It was Incredible. A novice that made that. Another one of my favorites was the uh, the young man who came out dressed as uh, Batman. Oh yes, and recreated that scene from Justice League Unlimited, yes. where Batman had to give something from his heart and soul yeah. and sang "Am I Blue?" Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And he that. came out and did this. Yes. Barbara and I had run into him. He was getting into the elevator as we were getting off, and mm -hmm. I turned around and here's the Dark Knight standing in front of me, with, I mean, absolutely perfect costume from the Dark yes. Knight movies. And I was just like, whoa, yes. you know? And that's not his first one. Uh, I've, I've met him over the years, um, and he started with the first Dark Knight movie costume. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like cast rubber and stuff like that, mm. you know? Yep. The whole thing. And then then he made a new one for to match with the movie. At the second one, um, you know, uh, Dark Knight. Yep. Uh, what's the second movie? Dark Knight Returns. Returns, yep. yeah. Yep. So I'm sure after the next one, too, he'll ma modify it and, and re redo it. So mm -hmm. he's also available for events and things. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, there was the dealer's room was mm -hmm. unbelievable. I mean, they had it. You wanted it, they had it, practically. Everything except for Jelly Babies. Oh, yeah, no, I no, looked fun. for Jelly Babies. I know, Doctor Who, yeah. Jelly Babies. So I tried. <coughs> Mark made a request that I yep. find some jelly babies. You can find them on Amazon wait, if you really wait, want wait, jelly babies. You actually babies. looked for jelly babies she, for Mark? He did. Yeah. I'm impressed. Well, he asked, yeah. do you want anything at the convention? I said, look for some jelly babies. So. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. Um, but someone did make a, a big uh, stormtrooper cake. Cake. That was, was incredible. Cake. I thought it was a costume display. Right. A costume display. But it was a cake. And they uh, then they served it up on, uh, on the afternoon, on, I think on Saturday or Sunday. And it's. Mm -hmm. You know, it was incredible. Um, and also, um, the guest of honor for Arisia, uh was Phil and Kaya Foglio from, or Folio from uh, Girl Genius. Mm -hmm. Girl Genius is a web comic. Yep. Uh, it's free online to read. I've gone through most of it. I have to catch up uh, for the last year. I haven't uh, read up. But um, I did was able to get a, a little bit of an interview with Phil. Uh, he's been illustrating and drawing for years and years. In fact, uh, when I was at RPI, he was the first guest of honor at uh, Genericon. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Phil goes way back yeah. to my back early the, convention days in right. the 70s. Yeah. So yeah, it's been around for a long time. Oh well yeah. Known in a Very talented world. And Girl Genius is an awesome web comic, and uh, I have one of the issues right here. We'll show later. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's the interview. Hi, this is James here with Phil Folio. Phil and Kaya Folio are the creators of. Girl Genius. And uh, Phil, um, how did the story of Agatha start for you? Well, we uh, pretty much wanted to do something with mad science. We wanted to do something with a strong female character. Uh, both of us had been, uh, you know, trying to come up with uh, uh, something that fed off of those. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day at a convention, I was just doodling and I came up with a recognizable picture of Agatha and it was you know girl genius which up until then was a phrase no one had ever used yeah. excellent and I also like you know adventure romance mad science yep yep well we decided uh, to go with a more um, well what they call now call steampunk feel to it but we were thinking oh like Jules Verne like Mary Shelley like H. Ryder Haggard uh, that more period uh, look to it, mm -hmm. which uh, was very visually striking. Uh, so, and that just seemed to crystallize the whole concept. Yeah, I, I love it. It's um, and I especially love you know the colors are also uh, excellent. You know the the rich colors that uh, your colorist does. We've always been very lucky with our colorists. Uh, although we are most pleased with the uh, current work of Cheyenne Wright, who is the one who's been coloring us for like the last six uh, volumes. Mm -hmm. He's done a fabulous job and continues to do so. And how long have you been a, an illustrator, an artist? Oh gosh, well I've always drawn, um, 
but I was working commercially, I've been working commercially since around 77, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank That's you very 1977, much. 1977, yeah. you kids. <laughs> I remember those days. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Phil. And uh, oh, back to the studio. Thank you. <laughs> they had uh, at least three or four contra dances, or contra style dances. Um, um, two of them were uh, actual contras, but one was called a techno contra. Mm -hmm. And then there was the Girl Genius Ball, which also did uh, that type of ballroom dancing or... Um, group dancing. It was uh, excellent. I like to try some of that and uh, have fun. Yeah. And then there's the uh, the other all night dance that goes, and uh, I was there too for that. I, I didn't want to get involved with the contra dancing because I was afraid the police might be called in because of the contraband. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, okay, some controversy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's really contraindicated. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> oh. oh, that's as bad as mine. <laughs> so that's it. That's a, a look at Aresia for 2012, and hopefully next year we'll get these guys to go. And yeah, that'll be good. Yeah. We might even be able to uh, film an episode from Aresia and do a panel on filming a show from Aresia. So, oh, yeah, that'd okay. be great. Sounds good. <laughs> And finally, it's time for toys, props, and other stuff, where we point to the wonderful world of collectibles and speaks about them. All right, first up, there's a Doctor Who, the Dalek Handbook, which is really great because it's the entire history of the Daleks. They incorporate all of the Doctor Who episodes since 1963 that have involved Daleks. I guess the Daleks back in the early days were even more popular than Doctor Who himself. They had their own TV and radio series. They were uh, comic book strips and everything. So that's a whole history of Doctor Who from the first Doctor all the way up to the current 11th Doctor. What's up next for Call of Duty? Next to that is my hardened edition of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, which I am absolutely having a blast playing. Um, ah, blast! I know. Ha, ha, ha. Um, the, the new maps and stuff are out. They're going to have new content uh, coming out each additional month for like the next nine months. Um, if you're an Elite subscriber, you get it first. And my daughter is actually playing. She's up to a level 50, and she is pleasantly getting better. Very nice. So we're having a lot of fun with that. Cool. And well, there's one of... Go ahead, Jay. Well, next to that is a piece of my artwork um, from a couple of years ago. Uh, this is Serenity in Orbit, based on the Firefly series and Serenity movie. Yep. Um, this is actually my last, my last proof. Uh, I had an artist proof uh, series made up of it. Never did a print run, but uh, I, this is the very last existing one that I have. I know you have one at home. I have one at home, yes. But, uh, it's this in is my the, collection. Yep, that's in the last Firefly, one in Firefly Universe Online goes online February 29th. Yes, it does. If you want to play. And looks like fun. It does. Okay, here again. Uh, this is a piece of art that I did called uh, Journey to a Lonely Planet. And it's uh, kind of got that retro sci-fi feel to it with the, uh, the rocket ship. Um, several planets hanging in the background. And this is done in charcoals. And I did this the week before I went to Aresia. I just sat down one night and started turning out a picture. Very nice. And uh, this is part of my picture a week for 2012. This is, uh, I started a a project where I'm working on doing at least one picture a week for 52 weeks straight. Excellent. In the middle is uh, my Christmas gaming gift that I got, the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Skyrim. Everybody's um, obsessed with Skyrim. Yep. I, I had a conversation with one of the kids on my new bus, which I'll get to in a little bit, and they were asking if I had played the game. Right. Is there a PC version of that? Yes. There is. Okay. Uh, and they, and, and I, I said yes, and I'm like, why? And she's like, well, I don't like the game. And uh, mm. I, she says it's not a good game. And I'm like, well, I agree with you. 
it's not a good game. And she's like, well, why do you play it? Because I'm like, because it's a great game. <laughs> and it's an elementary and middle school bus. So uh, the kids are like, oh. They're so, but, with but it's definitely a fun game. I'm just starting to get into it. Right. Definitely worth your time. Mm. Next to that is the volume one of Girl Genius, um, the graphic novel version of the what the webcomic is. Uh, this is uh, Agatha and the uh, Beetleberg Clank, <laughs> Volume 1. Um, All right, let's see. We've got two Farscape books brought to us this month by Adam, our wonderful cameraman. And uh, these are the collected, I believe, graphic novels, yep. correct? Yeah, they do a good job with the comic series. Yeah, very nice. And I suggest you check them out if you are a fan of Farscape because it's good storytelling and, and the artwork is really, really well done. Good. And I think these are going to become collector's items, to tell you the truth. Some uh, swag that I got at Some Regia. swag. Mm hmm All right. All right, so I got the, some swag here from Arisha. Uh, this is a uh, tote bag that was um, there for the Harry Potter uh, conference. Ascendio, uh, one of the uh, people who are, who's going to be going to that, uh, had a bunch of these and was giving them free. We had a little Hogwarts alumni reunion party while we were there. And then uh, this is uh, something I got for Christmas. Yeah, I finally got a Slytherin shirt. Hey! <laughs> My Slytherin t-shirt. Yeah. So I finally got that. Yeah, I've got some Christmas <laughs> swag. And this is also James t-shirt. Yep. Again, girl genius. This Very was nice. for the, the staff. Yep, this is the staff volunteer t-shirt. Oh, Folio did a special shirt for a reason. Yeah. yeah, nice. Turn, yep. turn it uh, that way. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So you know they take the uh, guest uh, guest of honor artist's uh, work and usually put it on the uh, t-shirts there. Um, All right. And last, last but not, not least, least, what? Yep. A sonic there screwdriver. There it is. Sonic screwdriver. This was given to me by my beautiful wife Barbara, and this is the tenth Doctor's. Sonic screwdriver, David Tennant's sonic screwdriver. It's really neat. It has sound effects. It lights up with a UV light. Mm -hmm. It's got a uh, pen nib at the end so you can write things. And if you want, you can swap this out for ultraviolet ink and write a message. And the message can be revealed with the ultraviolet light that <laughs> comes out of the emitter. There you go. And there's the sound. Yep. So it sounds that's like it. a shaving. <laughs> I know <laughs> it does. That sounds like a razor. <laughs> All right. Okay. If you want to check us out, um, check out our website. It's www.risfc.org. Check the credits at the end of the show for more information on how you can get in touch with us. We want to give a special shout out to Russell Cordell from KCAT in Los Gatos, California. Yep. They air Sci-Fi Journal on. Friday nights at 6 and 8.30. So, hello, California. Hi, West Coast. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and That's uh, awesome. Hello, if, if Steve Wozniak is watching, hey. <laughs> I know he is. Uh, you know. Is he out at Los Gatos? Yeah, he lives right. in Los Gatos. I, so. Does hello, he? Steve. Go ahead I also probably. want to do a special shout out. That I, I really would like to do this. Um, I started a new bus run. I, I now handle a little Sacred Heart School for East Providence. Right. And the kids are, are, are some of the greatest kids that I've ever had. But they're in, in two I want to talk about. They're six and eight years old. Really awesome boys. Jumping beans, but I love them. Connor and Anthony. And I bring this up in particular because they have got to be some of the biggest Godzilla fans oh, I've really? ever met in my entire <laughs> life. That's cool. One, they started talking about Godzilla this and Godzilla that. And I cannot tell you, I mean, every monster... Every freaking yeah. monster, right. uh, and they can recite Final Wars, and and it, and it's just freaking <laughs> crazy. And uh, I'm, 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 I'm loving oh, it. Yeah. So and the guy's yeah. like, "You're on TV," so yeah. we started talking about the show and stuff. And they actually went on YouTube and checked. Well, it at out. least they're not talking about Pokemon. And, so and, that's yeah. and, it, and it's just awesome, like, like Pokemon too. Yeah. They're into in the games, but everyone on the bus is awesome. But hi, guys. Well, all right, that's going to be it for our February 2012 edition of Sci-Fi Journal. Thanks very much for watching. We will see you in. March.